Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I'm going to do a quick video today on how to update the firmware of an Intel SSD. Uh, I did a video for uh, this thing called Flash Memory Summit, which is like a big conference in the SSD world uh, last year on how SSDs fail. And the number one reason SSDs fail is because of firmware bugs. So updating firmware is especially important to maintain reliability of SSDs. So, um, you know, nobody wants to have their SSD fail while they're plotting. Uh, that sucks. Um, so and basically, new firmware updates usually have features, performance improvement, security fixes, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, typically the cadence is most uh, vendors either at least you know one or two major firmware versions after the release, especially on data center SSDs that have like a you know three year longevity for you know production cycles. Um, yeah, so just check your vendor's website. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it on Intel because that's you know obviously what I know. Um, so the, the tool that Intel uses is called Intel Mass, Intel Memory and Storage Tool. Uh, there is a GUI that you can use in uh, Windows, and that's perfectly fine if, if you want to use the, the GUI. That's also the same tool that people use for like consumer uh, NVMe SSDs, like 660p or something. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the, the GUI tool works for all the firmware updates of the Intel SSDs as well. Um, the other thing, too, is that the... Um, uh, the uh, Intel Mass tool actually has the, uh, the the firmware binaries embedded in the tool. So you don't have to go hunt down these firmware binaries. I'll, I'll kind of show you how to do it if you wanted to do it through MVMe CLI. Uh, if, for instance, you got like a firmware binary from a vendor or you found it on a website, I can show you how to install it. But uh, for Intel SSDs, this is the best way to do it. Now, this tool won't work if your drive is like a Dell drive or an HP drive. Those guys have their own custom firmware that they lock down. Uh, but if you have a Intel drive with generic firmware, uh, this is the tool you want to do. So, uh, you know, you first you can click here to check for the firmware versions, and it brings you to this page, which basically is uh, has all the versions of the firmware here. <laughs> Sorry, dogs are barking in the background. Um, so you can see here, well, I'm going to update today at P4510. This is version 170. This is what we're going to try to do today. Uh, I just powered this system on, so um, I think these P4510s that I got have version 131 on them, which is kind of the version that they ship with. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead. We download the tool. Uh, I've already done it here. And then what I'm going to do is, you know, just secure copy it over uh, from my Windows box on my desktop, you know, to my Linux box. Hopefully that goes through. Oh, yep. So it's copying over. All right. Uh, so yeah, once we get back into it, uh, sorry, dog was barking. Uh, <laughs> um, so I SSH into my system. Uh, this is my budget build, the H470. If I do an LS here, you'll see the Intel Mass tool. Uh, this is, uh, I think I had it on here before, so it might just be happy. But first thing you do is got a chmod, uh, you know, give it permissions to install, and then you can do a sudo dpkg uh, install for Intel Mass, and it might just tell me I already have it. So that's just fine. Uh, okay, so the first thing you do, you can do an Intel Mass, uh, so you need sudo, so sudo Intel Mass uh, show Intel SSD. This should show me the SSDs in the system. You can also do a sudo NVMe list. Uh, okay, so we see we have, uh, whoops, sorry, I kind of blocked it here. Let me uh, rearrange my uh, thing here. There we go. Uh, now you guys can see just a little bit better. Okay. So let me, let me make this a little easier. Okay, so pseudo NVMe list. You can see I have two drives, NVMe 0 and NVMe 1. They're both two terabyte P4510s. Um, both of them have a 512, 512 byte LBA size as well as this firmware version 131. Um, and so we're gonna update 170. That was what was on the website. Uh, so well, first thing we're gonna do is this uh, pseudo Intel mass uh, show Intel SSD. This is going to show us the the drives. It'll tell us if it's like you know if the, if your drive's broken or something. It'll tell you the status. You know you can do smart and all that stuff through this tool too. Um, maybe I'll go through some of those commands in another day. But um, you can see here, this is my boot drive, the SATA drive. Don't need to do anything there. This is just my crappy boot drive here. Uh, but you can see here, firmware update available. Uh, firmware update available is one d one VDV one zero one seven zero, and the current firmware is VDV one zero one three one. So we're going to update the firmware. So we're going to do a sudo Intel mass load, and we're going to give it an Intel SSD zero because that's just this index zero right here. Uh, and it's going to say, "Do you want to update the firmware?" Yes, of course we do. So, 
Uh, this is pretty quick. It takes, I don't know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. All right, so you can see here it says, please reboot the system. I'm going to show you a trick where you don't have to reboot the system. So uh, we're going to update the other one real quick. And uh, so 0 and 1. And uh, yeah, so this this happened. You know, this firmware version of the P forty five ten happens to be the latest, and it has lots of good features in there. Um, stuff like multiple namespaces support, and uh, there actually is some major changes. So you definitely do want to update to this firmware if you have a P forty five ten or a P forty six ten. It runs the same firmware. So if you do a sudo nvme list now, you should see now that they're running one seventy. Um, now this tool, I think, does an NVMe reset of the controller after the, after the update. Um, in NVMe, you can update firmware without resetting the controller, and some firmware versions support that. It's called firmware update without reset. Uh, you know, great name. Uh, but uh, there's a different action. So if you wanted to do this through NVMe CLI, you could do. If you go to NVMe help, you can see there's a command called um, let's see, firmware download and firmware commit. So the way that this works in NVMe is a drive can have multiple firmware slots. And if you want to do a firmware download, you can specify which slot you want it to have. Most drives only have one slot or they have backup copies of the firmware in case it gets corrupted, they can go to the other one. Uh, but if you're actually, if you, for instance, find a uh, binary off the internet or something for a Samsung drive or whatever, um, and you, and you want to update, you would use the firmware download and firmware commit commands uh, to, in, in that order. You would say nvme firmware download slash dev slash nvme zero namespace one, and then a firmware commit would actually run the firmware. So what we're actually going to do is do a sudo nvme reset, which uh, this actually does a controller level reset. Uh, you can't specify the namespace because it's, it's specified by controller. So you just do a sudo nvme reset of, of uh, slash dev slash nvme zero. This is going to reset nvme zero and re reset NVMe 1. This is a great little hack. You don't have to reboot the system. You can just basically reset the drives. Uh, so now if I do a sudo NVMe list, man, cannot type today. OK, uh, now you can see they both have 170. They're very happy. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is change the LBA size. So uh, in SSDs, they have something called a flash translation layer, which is basically the logical to physical mapping of which LBA that the host tracks um, as far as which logical block address of the, of the drive actually maps to what NAND die inside. And the way that the SSD firmware does this is through 4K chunks. So it's almost always better to just format the SSD to a 4K sector size. That way you ensure things are always 4K aligned and nice and happy. Uh, there's a very easy way to do this. So if you go to a sudo nvme uh, identify namespace command and human readable for as dash H, and we're going to do nv0 namespace one. Since we're identifying a namespace, we actually need the namespace identifier in the command. So make sure you have the namespace one. This is nvme zero, controller zero. N one means namespace one. And if we do this, uh, we're going to see lots of information about the namespace, like namespace size, namespace capacity, namespace utilization, uh, features, all this, all this stuff. But what we're looking for is this LBA format. So LBA format zero is a 512 byte sector size. LBA format one is a 4K sector size. Now, metadata size zero. We want to make sure this drive happens to support in this firmware version only these two sector sizes. If you have another enterprise drive and you see 4K sector size with metadata size that's not zero, don't do that. Uh, this is called protection information. This is called end-to-end -end data protection in NVMe. You don't need it right now. This is for enterprise software. Uh, you're gonna. It's just gonna confuse the hell out of the file system. So, find the one that says metadata size zero. 4K, 4096 bytes, uh, and then we're going to do a sudo nvme format. By the way, this is a very dangerous command. This is also the command you use to wipe an, uh, an nvme SSD. This basically instantly wipes the drive. So be extremely careful with this command. <laughs> so, uh, and we were going to do a slash dev slash nvme zero namespace one, and we're going to give it an LBA size of one because that's what we want. LBA format one for 4096. So if we run this command, again, this is one where it's, it's actually going in changing the cryptographic key in the drive and uh, it's actually trimming all the LBAs. So in Linux, this is called discard, SSD called trim. This basically just uh, makes sure the SSD knows that it doesn't need to track any of those blocks anymore. So, okay, successful format. We're gonna do a sudo nvme list and voila, the drive has 4K sector size, yay. Um, okay, so we're gonna do it to the other one. Simple, you just change nvme zero to nvme uh, one. Run the command again, and uh, we're going to be on our way. 
So uh, that's it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably do some. Um, so we do a pseudo NVMe list. These two two terabyte drives are fully updated, 4K sector size, formatted, ready to go. You know, the next thing I do for plotting is obviously make a file system, um, mount them, get ready to plot. So that's it. Uh, this is the first thing I do to every SSD uh, out of the box. Just update the firmware, get up 4K sector size, uh, get it ready to go and happy. So uh, check out Intel Mass Tool. Again, there's lots of other commands in there. You can look at the, uh, there's a, um, you know, user guide here on the website. Uh, you know, I wish you could copy paste. It's like secured thing, but for whatever reason, uh, there's a help help command as well. So uh, don't get too discouraged if if you need to uh, do a uh, sudo intel mass uh, help. I think it'll give you all the commands here. Lots of cool stuff. They've kind of mixed in the SATA and NVMe commands, which is kind of frustrating. But um, yeah, there's lots of interesting uh, commands in here. Uh, but I'd also encourage you to do a you know learn NVMe CLI. Uh, this is uh, the actual, you know, official tool for NVMe basically is, is also very dangerous because you can send literally every single NVMe command possible uh, and you can send them right from the tool. So you can, so you can do stuff like sanitize or I mentioned format, which kind of erases the drive, uh, you know, setting features for if you wanted to customize some of the feature set of the NVMe SSD. There's lots of cool stuff you can do in this tool, but that's for another day. So uh, now you guys know how to update the firmware on an Intel SSD. Um, we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.